We have got to put a stop to this. On December 21, 2020, the Texas Health and Human Services Commission gave notice to the owners and operators of Sacred Oak Medical Center that the hospital's state license would not be renewed. Sacred Oak Medical Center was without incident. We hurt no one. How can they have possibly pulled a hospital license away from us? So what do I want to happen? This isn't just about me fighting to get Sacred Oak open. This is about, we've got to have other hospitals. We need growth in this area, and we're not gonna get it if we don't change the system. If we continue to allow these bureaucrats to do what they want to do and they're with no rhyme or reason. And putting systems in place, third party advisors, I mean, you name it, we did it. And for them just to come in and take our license and to close our facility, we had to discharge patients on Christmas Eve. I mean, it is so incredibly sad. Let, I have over 80 employees that lost their jobs at Christmas. This action followed two years of harassment, intimidation, unprecedented demands, unsupported findings, and absurdly excessive fines by state agencies and their representatives, and defied the findings and recommendations of the state's own surveyors. At a time when other behavioral hospitals are still in operation after treatment infractions that included rape, patient neglect, and abuse, how can the state of Texas be allowed to single out one brand new facility with no such patient incidences whatsoever? The people responsible for orchestrating these ongoing attacks, and ultimately this despicable action, are state officials and employees. They can be heard and seen on camera, plotting, conspiring, making false and unfounded statements. Others can be seen and heard questioning the accuracy of the actions they are being forced to implement, denying that there were any real problems at Sacred Oak Medical Center. Why did this happen? And for whose benefit? Certainly not the people of Texas. Experts agree America is experiencing a mental health care crisis. Research from the National Institute of Mental Health confirms that mental illnesses affect tens of millions of people each year and estimates suggest that only half of these people receive treatment. It is estimated that 10% of working adults in the U.S. struggle with substance abuse. Despite its size and immense resources, the state of Texas has the unfortunate distinction of being high on the list of states who are underserving this community need. Four years ago, local entrepreneurs Kevin and Sandra Munns became aware of this desperate situation. I talked with Sandra about not simply, this wasn't a, a donation, this was going out and doing something about the problem. This was me taking uh, my years of, of business relationships and going to people and saying, join with me and let's create a partnership and it's really trying to fix a problem. We know several people that have fought depression, have anxiety, and it was just an opportunity that is needed in the community. Kevin and Sandra Munns assembled a team of investors and healthcare professionals and began working on a facility to address this critical need. On May 31, 2017, following a thorough, rigorous application, inspection, and licensing process, Sacred Oak Medical Center, LLC, came to life. A brand new, state-of-the-art behavioral health and chemical dependency facility on Space Center Boulevard in Houston. Sacred Oak Medical Center was accredited by the Joint Commission on July 11, 2017, the gold standard in quality assurance. That certification remained in effect until the hospital's closure. A month later, an agreement for participation with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services was secured, and under the direction of Sacred Oak Medical Center's highly respected and impressively credentialed leadership, the facility's Phase I operations commenced with 20 inpatient behavioral health beds. When we got open, the demand for the facilities were greater than we ever anticipated. Everything that we thought to be true was true. Uh, we had a, a waiting list from emergency rooms trying to get patients into the hospital. Uh, we didn't even get to 
do all the programs that we wanted to do with chemical dependency because there was so much need for behavioral health patients. There was such a shortage for people who had chronic behavioral health problems. Plans were soon underway for phase two and an additional 24 inpatient chemical dependency beds. Two outpatient facilities were opened to provide a continuum of care for patients discharged from Sacred Oaks inpatient hospital facility. At its peak, Sacred Oaks Medical Center and its team of experienced, compassionate, licensed medical professionals was providing inpatient hospitalization to approximately 75 patients per month, and the needs of over 80 patients per day were being addressed in outpatient programs. Operations were conducted at full capacity for 12 months without incident from either state or federal regulatory agencies. Then, in 2018, a series of questionable actions by the state of Texas commenced and continued at a relentless pace for two years. To operate a behavioral health hospital, a state hospital license must be issued by Texas Health and Human Services. Once that license is in place, application can be made to the federal government for Medicare-Medicaid participation with Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, more commonly known as CMS. The federal government contracts with Texas Health and Human Services to provide the surveyors for the federal inspections. So the same surveyors come to these medical facilities for both the state and federal inspections. Their findings are reported to CMS, and consequently, CMS makes all their decisions based upon the information that is provided to them in this manner. If CMS elects to cancel a hospital's Medicare, Medicaid participation, that decision is based solely on the feedback received from Texas Health and Human Services and their surveyors. Consequently, the fate and financial health of a hospital in the state of Texas lies solely on the report generated from the state's surveyors. From June 2018 through May 2019, Texas Health and Human Services was on site at Sacred Oak Medical Center 13 times. Each visit was followed by Sacred Oak's submission of plans of correction, as outlined in the regulations. In May 2019, these surveyors recommended to CMS the termination of Sacred Oak's participation with Medicare and Medicaid, mainly due to ligature risks. At that time, Sacred Oak's facility was less than 24 months old and all its fixtures had been previously approved by the state regulators prior to opening. Defying logic and fairness and ignoring procedure, the state's surveyors cited hinges, sinks, bathrooms, and door closures as risks for strangulation, even though the facility's original plans included these items and had been previously approved by the same regulatory agency. It was becoming clear that outside forces were involved. A pattern began to emerge, as did its obvious engineering by a cast of recurring characters. Each time the hospital was sighted, Sacred Oak Medical Center made the necessary adjustments, but the state's demands and penalties continued to intensify. Over the course of 12 months, Sacred Oak Medical Center was forced to engage an out-of-state firm, Cordemanche & Associates, as third-party evaluators and directed to cover travel costs for their multiple stays in Houston. Despite that firm's glowing reviews of the hospital, the state levied a fine of $319,000, which in the interest of resolving the matter once and for all, Sacred Oak Medical Center paid. I have no idea. I don't understand. Um, we had systems in place of um, consultants to help us with the licensing and getting the staff to get going to, to see patients. And the next thing you know, it's just constant belligerent of state officers coming in and doing inspections of this and that. And I have no idea what the drive is, the force behind this of closing Sacred Oak. Routinely, every problem that Sacred Oak Medical Center has encountered with Texas Health and Human Services connects to a state employee named Rick Smith who, as lead surveyor, is under the supervision of Jennifer Berger, the manager of the Houston Zone. Sacred Oak Medical Center's staff reported that Rick Smith had been, in their words, totally unreasonable and seemed blatantly out to get us. 
Kathleen Bertelson, Sacred Oak Medical Center's Director of Quality, was brought to tears, recalling the browbeating she received at Smith's hands for her handling of patient grievances. He was dismissive of the glowing reviews offered by Cordemanche and McWilliams, who had provided third-party oversight for months with monthly visits to Sacred Oak Medical Center. In a conversation with a surveyor in Smith's charge, a Sacred Oak staff member was told that Jennifer Berger has an axe to grind and a bad attitude, and that Rick Smith is scared of her, so we have to do whatever she says. Sacred Oak reported Berger's prejudicial view of the hospital to Christy Jordan, a supervisor with the Enforcement Division of Texas Health and Human Services, and requested that Smith not perform and that Berger not oversee any of Sacred Oak's future surveys. The state took no action on that request, and Smith's relentless campaign to discredit Sacred Oak continued, in lockstep with Berger's conscious efforts to achieve a predetermined outcome. When Smith returned on October 27, 2020, Sacred Oak was ready. In one of the surveys, we happened to overhear the surveyor talking to one of the nurses, and I was just overwhelmed at the things that the surveyor was saying to this nurse. And I didn't, no one would believe how aggressive the surveyor was being. And, and also, you know, we had surveyors that were saying there was nothing wrong. They didn't understand why they were continuing to stay here. And so when the state was coming in for our final survey, um, we have surveillance all over the hospital. It's a behavioral health hospital, but I made the decision and told them that I didn't want a square foot of the facility not recorded. So any place that we didn't have video surveillance, we put video surveillance. It smells of corruption. It smells of corruption. As Rick Smith resumed his pattern of deceit and disinformation, he sought to paint the Sacred Oaks ownership as corrupt and its staff as uncaring and inept. And one of the original owners of this group, he was currently in prison. My expertise is in construction. Uh, I built facilities for Memorial Hermann for UT physicians, so I understand the facility portion of all of this. I elected to bring in experts, so we hired consultants. Um, and one of the consulting firms that we hired, Starsky Bomer was involved with. He was indicted several months after we got started for an incident that occurred several years prior with a facility that we had no affiliation with, nor people that we had any affiliation with. And upon our knowledge of this indictment, we terminated not only him immediately, but the consulting firm that he worked with. He has had no involvement with Sacred Oak Medical Center since December of 2018. I was looking at their 855, their application, and they missed who the stockholders are, the LLCs, and you have to list anything about 5% of the ownership. But one of the biggest holders is one called Stinky Treasures. So I got to, I, I looked it up, Urban Dictionary, and Stinky Treasures is when you take money and you rub it in feces and get clean it off and you pass it on to somebody and they don't know what the smell is. That's called stinky torture. You serious? Is that not the most foul thing you ever heard? <laughs> so they're just calling their entity stinky. Yeah, it almost sounds like tongue and cheek for long money laundering. <laughs> yeah. I'm not real sure what stinky treasure is, but Stinky's Treasure is the name of the trust that Sandra and I set up for my daughter. Uh, so that she would have ownership in this hospital. And Stinky is the nickname that I gave her when she was two or three years old. And uh, at 26, she's not real amused by me calling her Stinky, but nevertheless, this was 
um, kind of our little fun way of saying, this is going to be Stinky's treasure. What we leave for you to run from here out. They have another one that means, it's a Spanish word that means uh, a redhead. Pili Grobo means a little redhead out there. The little Pili, tell it's here. Grobo is red. Yeah, little redhead. So if you can't tell, this is a family deal that we're really having fun with. So we set up trust uh, that own the shares of this hospital. Um, this wasn't a big profit incentive. This was something to be family owned and family operated and something for us to give back to the community. And so in setting up these trusts, we had fun with them. And one of the trusts we set up besides Stinky's Treasure was Little Pelly Rojo. And Little Pelly Rojo is redhead. And the redhead was my wife Sandra's dog. Pelly Rojo was my little redhead, my little redhead uh, spaniel that I had. Her name was Bridget. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Good. Good. After viewing the absurd comments made by Smith to his team of surveyors, Kevin and Sandra Munns decided to present their case in person. Kevin Munns addresses the false information that the group has been given by Rick Smith. Soon, the survey team realizes their remarks have been captured on video. Panic ensues as a search for cameras and microphones begins. Moments later, Rick Smith leaves the conference room for a period of 22 minutes to report what has happened to Jennifer Berger. Upon his return, he realizes the impact of this new development. I believe the footage speaks for itself. I couldn't believe that the surveyors were saying that there's nothing but standard level deficiencies here. Why are we still here? They were here two, they were in our facility two days and were asking Rick Smith, are, are we done? Are we, gonna, are we gonna be through today? And Rick Smith said, no, we're, we've got more to look for. And they stayed four full days uh, trying to find anything that they could possibly find. The whole time was surveyors speaking that, that we have on video saying, I, I don't understand. I mean, why are we continuing to, these are things that we typically wouldn't even write up. Why are we continuing to be here? As the survey team continues their work, Smith's intent and his obedience to Berger becomes evident to all. But the team's assessments are different from Smith's. Like, are patients really in danger here? Do you feel like patients are really in danger here? I don't. Or, I mean, I don't feel like they're in danger here. No. And that's, I, I agree with you. I think the nurses do get good care. I do. I I they're the fabulous patients. You know what They're very attentive to their patients. Um, no, I don't think that's ever been an issue either. No. Really. No. Their findings and recommendations are much more positive and encouraging. The things that we found, while they are still concerning, mm -hmm. can they be kept at a standard level, get their CMS, let them walk on, see how they do? Because if they go back to previous practices, you'll know, and then you'll have the opportunity to come back and do things that you need to do. Me personally being objective and never having any dealings with this facility before, I feel like they need a chance to prove themselves. Okay. I know we have a lot of findings, but I don't see anything that can't be done on a standard level. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's up to you all. That's how I, 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 I agree. And ultimately, a consensus is formed. I'm, I'm going to call Jennifer right away. If they're going to just do standard level, to me, that's all they need to know. Okay. Yeah. And Jennifer can let them know. And if they want to have a conference, we can do it Sunday. Uh, and we're all where we need to be. Cool. They can do a team meeting that we can. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good uh, suggestion.
What do you think about this? I think so. Okay. Okay. But when Smith calls Berger to inform her of his team's findings. Hey, Jennifer. Listen, I'm calling you in reference to this. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, we are all... And come help me with it. We are the consensus of everybody. Well, I don't know, but we're at the same Are you a surprise? I gets an earful. Smith then engineers an off-site meeting with his team for lunch. When they return, the group stands firm in their support of Sacred Oak. On October 30th, Smith's team conducts an extremely positive exit survey with Sacred Oaks management and operations teams, who began formulating a plan to address the survey team's findings. But on November 3rd, Rick Smith returns with one of his survey team members and informs Sacred Oak that their survey of this 20-bed hospital would continue for a fifth day. I'm at a loss when they want to find us, they want us to bring third party, third, uh, third party surveyors in to oversee what we're doing. And I convinced everyone that I didn't know what was wrong. I'd ask everybody why they were, things were going the way they were, but I made the decision that everything they wanted, we were going to do it. We paid the fines. We didn't believe it. We, but I convinced everybody, I don't know what it is or, or why they, they've got this bone to pick, but let's just do what they say and let's move on. There's a bigger picture here, and that bigger picture is all these patients who need our help. And so we paid the fines. We paid the third-party surveyors. We did all of it. So I'm so confused because it's not like we fought these people. We actually bowed down to everything that they wanted. On November 4th, during a second exit conference, this time with revised results, Sacred Oak is informed by Smith and a lone associate that the hospital has been cited with immediate jeopardy findings, the most serious infractions possible. As that news was being delivered, a Sacred Oak staff member seated next to Smith noticed an incoming text from Berger. The message? Sacred Oaks Management then forwards the immediate Jeopardy report to Maggie McWilliams of McWilliams Health Consulting, a respected professional engaged by the hospital. Writing directly to CMS, she takes them to task for ignoring approved protocols and then offers page after page of personal observations challenging the validity of the amended findings of the Texas Health and Human Services surveyors. As Sacred Oak argues its case with CMS, Texas Health and Human Services notifies the hospital that the facility's state hospital license has been terminated. 
On December 23rd, Jennifer Berger arrives at Sacred Oak Medical Center to personally remove the hospital's license from the lobby. After retrieving the framed document, she returns to her vehicle and immediately makes a call, presumably to report the success of her efforts to shut down Sacred Oak. I have no explanation for any of this. Sacred Oak Medical Center believes that Jennifer Berger, following instructions from someone higher up in state government, directed her hand-picked surveyor, Rick Smith, to use any means and make any claims necessary to challenge the hospital's right to operate. That Rick Smith followed Berger's directives and waged an extended campaign of harassment, exaggerated claims, and misinformation to get what Berger and her handlers expected. That Smith pressured his colleagues to join in this effort and conspired with them to get the outcome Berger demanded that these actions and others cut off the vital flow of Medicare reimbursements to Sacred Oak Medical Center, negatively impacted the morale of the hospital staff, and ultimately resulted in the cancellation of Sacred Oak's license to operate in the state of Texas and the opportunity to serve those patients desperately in need of care, that far more severe claims and rulings against other mental health facilities were not enforced in the same manner or simply ignored, and that these facilities continue to operate with full knowledge and support of CMS. Most importantly, Sacred Oak maintains that standard procedures for reviewing the actions of mental health facilities were sidestepped or completely ignored, and that Sacred Oak was denied due process to present its findings and provide a plan for correction. Finally, the state courts have taken notice. On March 22, 2021, a state district court judge granted Sacred Oak's request for a temporary injunction against Texas Health and Human Services Commission and noted that Sacred Oak has demonstrated the likelihood of success on the merits at trial and that the December 21, 2020 action may violate Texas Administrative Code by purporting to deny Sacred Oak's application for renewal of its hospital license without providing prior notice of same prior opportunity to demonstrate or achieve compliance, and prior opportunity for a hearing, and finding that irreparable harm and economic injury will be sustained by Sacred Oak by the continued closure of the hospital and consequent disruption of its business. Despite the powerful language used by the court, the state of Texas is appealing the ruling. The egregious actions against Sacred Oak by Texas Health and Human Services are clear and undeniable. The question is, why? What could have possibly motivated the state to take this unjustly punitive action against, of all things, a behavioral health hospital in the midst of a raging mental health care crisis? No one benefits from these horrific actions unless you happen to be one of the two publicly traded behavioral health organizations that own 40% of all available behavioral beds in Houston, Texas. These corporate giants own over 1,000 facilities across the U.S. Is this just another example of political corruption at the state level? Are these agencies being politically pressured and manipulated? Another troubling fact? In 2018, at about the same time that the state's hyper-scrutiny of Sacred Oak began, it was announced that Metastar's Bay Area Regional Medical Center in Webster, Texas, was closing and filing for bankruptcy. An estimated 700 employees lost their jobs, and the hospital's sudden closing spawned multiple class-action lawsuit against Metastar for failing to comply with worker adjustment and retraining. In the closing months of 2020, with the state's regulatory wolves at Sacred Oak's doors, similar operations began at a new behavioral health facility in the same area under a different name, run by a company who secured that real estate from Metastar. What would I have done different? The state fined Sacred Oak Medical Center $319,000. Our fine, when we discussed it with them, was supposed to be less than a tenth of that. I would have fought this tooth and nail. I would have brought this to the people 
back when it started, I would have, if I had any idea that this would have gotten to a point that they were going to close our hospital down, I would have fought it. I would have fought it from the very beginning. And instead, I was meek and I said, I need to do what's best for the patients. I need to get make sure that these regulators who I'm going to have to live with the rest of our lives in this facility, we need to make sure that we make them happy. So we paid the $319,000 fine. We brought in all the third parties they required and it made no difference whatsoever. I would have fought it. I should have fought it two years ago.